All right, this is an honor for me. It's your boy Emilio Sparks. I am chilling with A Plus and Festo of the Mighty Souls of Mischief. This is big for me. What up, y'all? What's up with it, man? What's up, world? How y'all out there? What's up, y'all? Chilling, chilling, chilling. All right, what I want to get into is I want to know the effects because you guys were signed to your label to Jive right out of high school. What did that? Did that? Increase in ego, or did that humble your experience uh, to create the music that you guys created? Well, I mean, uh, humility has always been a big part of, of how we get down, like, uh, as people. You know, when we make the music, it's, it's raw and it's aggressive and sometimes offensive to people. But, but actually, as, as actual people, we always maintain a level of humility, and we, we were kind of raised knowing that, it could have never happened, and it could be gone tomorrow at any given moment. So even though there was, there was a lot of pressures, our life changed a lot. Like we always kept in mind that we have always been blessed to be in this situation, and we never really had a too much of an ego problem and what like thinking like because literally, in everything and any blessing that comes to you in life could be fucking gone tomorrow. You know, and 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 we we just knew that we never even thought it was actually going to happen. We were just trying to make it happen. So the fact that it did blew us away. We would never take that for granted. Yeah, I mean, at that age, you know, you're you're a kid, you so you don't you don't really understand what what's really going on around you. But I feel like we were kind of wise beyond our years in a lot of ways, you know, musically and and just in life in general, just from our upbringing. But it's still like you know, it's it's kind of like a blur to be honest with you right now. You know, it hap everything happened so fast, but we never took one second of it for granted. And um, you know, every step of the way, like you said, we thought. You know, at any moment, this could be, you know, gone. You know what I mean? So we we, we just cherished the moment and lived in the moment. Uh, you guys were known for, for progression from 93 to infinity. What was the change from 93 to infinity to no man's land? Like, where was the, what was the sound was going? Because I, I, I caught an interview from you, and you weren't really happy with the sound because Jav was getting on your ass to change up and, and set to the trends of what California hip-hop was, 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 was where it was at. This is more so what happened, man. Uh... Basically, we came out with the album. It was it was successful. It was a successful album, and we didn't know what was gonna happen. We were thankful it happened. When we got back to Jive, we started making the second album. Jives came to us and said, "Look, we're no longer gonna craft ourselves as being a hip hop label. We're gonna be a pop label. We're gonna get rid of most of our hip hop groups. We're gonna keep a couple R and B groups and a couple like strong hip hop groups, and we're gonna go pop. Like they had just signed Backstreet Boys, and they were going in that direction. And they were like, we're gonna keep R Kelly, keep Too Short. We're gonna keep you guys, except." You guys have to start making music like Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, which is a, a group I respect to the utmost. But at, at that time, it's like, you know, that, that's not the sound that they signed us for. So we were like, how, how could you say that to us? You know that we're about some hip hop shit, you know? And they were like, no, well, if you don't start making music like Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, we're going to shelf your next album. And, 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 and so we were like, yeah, well, fuck you. We made No Man's Land. Did the exact opposite of what they wanted. We, it, wasn't like, it, it wasn't like the album we would have done right after 93 until infinity if we didn't have that adversity. At the same time, if you listen to the album, it, if you listen to it now, it was ahead of its time then. A lot of stuff that we was doing on that album started happening later anyway. But the motivation behind behind us taking a hard a hard nose against Jive was because they were like, do a Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince album. We were like, fuck off. And that's, that's what No Man's Land was all about. Yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't like that was the first time we were at odds with the label. We had been at odds with the label since Actually, since Cab Fair, since we couldn't use Cab Fair, because that was the main reason why really why they, why they signed us, they jumped on the bandwagon after they heard 93 Till Infinity. But it wasn't like they heard every song on the album that we made and were like, oh, we're so excited about the Souls of Mischief. We were always a little bit at odds with them about the image that they wanted us, the way they wanted us to be seen, so to speak. They always wanted us to do something that we were like, nah, we're not feeling that. You know what I mean? So it just happened to me. we just got to we just crossed that bridge when we got there basically we realized that we would be at odds with them at some point and that was the manifestation of that a right, plus you talked about once you guys left jive you learned more about the music industry when you left what was the pros and cons of being signed to a major and what was the education like after the fact you left jive well uh, the obvious pros behind being signed to a major is the corporation dollars back in your project it, you know um be because of like the the so-called no, uh, what do they call it, um, payola, the no payola laws or whatever, you know, you still have to pay somebody to get on the radio. You still have to pay somebody to get your this spend over here. You still got to pay. And the thing about a major label is they provide the money to do that. So we're looking at them like they could get us out there. At the same time, because they're the ones that front all the money, 
you pay it back out of your smaller percentage of the earnings. So you probably, it's like sharecropping. You're always going to be in debt with them, even if you have a platinum album. We had a gold album. You know, even if you go platinum, artists ain't tripping off. They're not recouping from their label. They're Because they're platinum, they're making a gang of money off shows. And so that, that that's the downside of being on, 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 um, on a major. On the flip side, when you're on an independent label, uh, you don't have as much money. But you have full creative control and a larger profit share. So that's the upside to being independent. And us being artists that come from our soul with our music, come, like our music has never been about making money. We just stumbled into a situation to where we could actually make money off of our music. But that was never our premise on stepping into the game. So for us, independent, the independent way, to, we value to having creative control a lot more than like, fuck it, give me $2,000, I mean $2 million, promote the shit out of my album, and I'll shake my ass all day and make this money. I mean, I'm not saying it to be like one of them people that say, fuck money, I want money, we're trying to make, we, we, you know, we're trying to make money. At the same token, like, the way we are, creative control is tantamount to how we can be effective in making music. We don't even, um, we, don't need, we don't feel good making music without that creative control. So, so those are the pros and cons to, to uh, being in a corporate setting and an independent setting. Us personally, I wouldn't tell you just go independent, and I wouldn't tell you just go corporate. It's a it's situational for every artist and everybody's situation. And some people probably should die, sign a deal. That's the only way they're gonna get out. Other people, if you don't want those those shackles on your feet, and you want to be more free about it, and, and you know that you, you might have to like be more um, inventive with how you promote yourself. And and and, and uh, the present age of digital technology has provided a lane for a lot of independent artists. So, yeah, just to add on to that, I mean we. We are grateful for that experience to be on a major label. It gave us the opportunity to, you know, put our music out to the world, and, and it did provide us a fan base to build, a, like, a foundation that so we could move on um, in an independent uh, market. But, um, you know, like I, like you said, I wouldn't say, oh, just be independent or, oh, just be on a major label. Do what you feel suits you best and, and look for the situation to work out for the best for you.